We know that with the Windows operating system, when you first boot or launch the Windows, that you actually get to see the desktop. And the desktop can contain a variety of things, including folders, files, shortcuts, and even the taskbar and the start menu. What we want to start to work with, though, are the containers in which you will see different things once you launch Windows. These are those Windows with the lowercase w. They all work the same way, whether you're working with a specific application and file, or whether you're working with the operating system and its folders and files, or even operating system tools. Something very simple. I'm going to move down to my Start button, and I'm going to give it a left click. And earlier, I pinned the calculator to the top of my Start menu. If you weren't following along in that particular lesson, you can type Calculator in the search, or if you're on Windows XP, you need to go to your All Programs, open the Accessories folder, and you should find the calculator there. I'll go ahead and give the calculator entry a left click so that we can launch it. Now, in theory, the calculator is in a window, although this is a very simple, probably the most simple type of window you'll ever see. What I can see at the top is that there is an icon, which is usually going to be different for every type of application. In this case, it looks like a little calculator. I also see a band or a shaded bar at the top. This entire bar is called the title bar. And in the title bar, I not only get to see the little icon, I also get to see the name of the application, in this case, Calculator. If I was working with something that had a specific file open, then I would see both the name of the application and the name of the specific file. On the right-hand side, we get to see three buttons that will be very important because we use them in every type of window that we work with. These windows are called Minimize, Maximize, and Close. The names are important because that's exactly what they do. Now currently, I have the calculator open, but let's say that I wanted to keep it open. I did not want to close it, but I just wanted to get it off of the desktop. That's what I can use the Minimize button for. When you click Minimize, which looks like a little underline, it actually kind of shrinks down the window and just places it down in the taskbar. Now I need to show you a couple of differences between Windows XP and Vista and Windows 7 that I'm using. In Windows XP and in Windows Vista, you will see the calculator show up as soon as you open it. Then when you minimize it, you'll see the button. The same is true here, except in Windows 7, I may actually see the button even before I launch the calculator, if it's been pinned to the task menu. Regardless of which version you're using, you can pause your mouse over the button, and you'll see a little tooltip or a little picture show up, and you can click on this in order to bring the window back up. I'll go ahead and give it a left click. So I minimized the calculator down to my taskbar, and then I restored it back to its original size. The middle button is actually called the Maximize button. It's interesting, but in the calculator, it actually doesn't do anything, because the calculator is a fixed size. This particular window can't be resized. So when I pause my mouse over it, you'll see it doesn't change color, it doesn't get any shading, and it also doesn't give me a tooltip. If I click on it, it also doesn't do anything. The button that I can use, that I'm not going to use right away, is the Close button, which obviously closes the application down completely. So you'll always have a title bar in any window. You'll have what we call the application icon, the application name, possibly the name of the file, minimize, maximize, and close buttons. And we'll talk a little bit more about minimize, maximize, close in another application. The second thing that you'll find in common with almost every window that you open is there will be some type of menu system. For the calculator, there are just three menus, and we see those listed as text. They say View, Edit, and Help. All menus work basically the same way. When you click on them, they either fall down or up. These are called drop-down menus. And then you can move your mouse over a particular item and then do a single left click to make a choice. In this case, we can see that the calculator actually has several different options. I can use it as a standard calculator, a scientific calculator, a programming calculator, statistics, and so forth. On the right-hand side of a menu, you will often see the keyboard equivalence of choosing that option. Just a reminder, because I know it's easy to forget and then get confused when it's all so new, but I'm using Windows 7. If you're using another operating system, or even just because your computer is different than mine, 
like a Dell versus an HP or some other manufacturer, your exact options on menus and the buttons that you see may vary. So I can see that if I press Alt plus the number 2, I can change this to the scientific calculator. Now that may not be too big of a deal, but what it means is instead of clicking on View Scientific, I could simply press Alt 2 with the calculator open and get the same result. For many people, using the keyboard shortcut is preferable to having to go through multiple clicks to access a menu option. Here we'll go ahead and use the menu though. I'll go ahead and click Scientific and you can see that the view of our calculator has changed and now includes all kinds of scientific functions. Likewise, any of our other menus will work the same way as well. For example, the Edit menu often contains the features to copy and paste information. In this case, the calculator also has History, and you can see that next to History, it has a right pointing arrow. This is called a flyout or an expanding menu and it tells you that history is an item underneath the edit menu but then the history item itself has multiple options. Now we haven't done anything with the calculator so all of these are grayed out. When a menu item is grayed out it means it's not available. If a menu item is not available it means that either it's not appropriate for whatever you're doing or you haven't properly selected something that could use that. So in this case all of these items are grayed out because we haven't done anything with the calculator yet. There is no history to copy, for example. The important point here, though, is that when you have a flyout menu, you don't actually have to click on it. All I have to do is move my mouse over it, pause for just a second, and then the menu will fly out. Sometimes you have multiple levels. In other words, you can go here, and then you'll fly out, and fly out, and fly out again. Just remember to pause and wait for the options. If you ever want to get out of a menu without making a choice, and without deselecting something, remember that you can press your escape key. So if I press my escape key one time, that gets rid of the history flyout. And if I press my escape key a second time, that collapses down the edit menu. Notice that the edit menu is still selected though. So to completely get out of the edit menu itself, I'm going to press escape a third time. Now you can see that it's no longer highlighted. The calculator is a very basic window. It has the title bar with minimize, maximize, and close, even though maximize isn't available, and it also has three very simple menus. But it gives you a good opportunity to see how this particular window works. What I want you to notice before we close this out is that if I move my mouse to an edge of this window and kind of move it back and forth across the edge, you will notice that the mouse cursor does not change. It stays at a white arrow. That's because the calculator window is not resizable. Many windows are, but some are not. And I just wanted to show you this because in just a few minutes we'll talk about resizing windows. What I can do with the calculator though is I can move it. If I don't like it over here on the left side of my screen, I can press and hold my left mouse button anywhere on the title bar and I can drag it to a new location. Simply releasing the mouse when I get it to the position that I want. With that, let's go ahead and close the calculator and move on to a window that has a few more features for us to look at. Now I will click on the red X on the upper right corner of the window. This formally closes the calculator completely out.